It's Hop Along Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hop Along Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And appearing as that laughable old character, California, is Andy Clyde. Now to our story, Hoppy Takes a Chance. September at the Bar 20. Like all cattle ranchers, is a happy month for the line riders... The lonely cowboys whose duty it is to patrol the boundaries of the ranch and see to it that the outfit's stock stays on the reservation. It's a happy time because it marks the end of the season for them and the friendly atmosphere of the ranch house just around the corner. But Bob Cranston was different from the rest. There was a frown on his face as Hoppy rode up to him on the ridge south of the Bar 20 ranch house. <laughs> Hi there, Waddy. How's it going? Can't complain, Hoppy. Good. I figure on sending you out of sunup tomorrow. Make a circuit of the ranch boundaries, run down the strays, and kick any of Salinger's cows back onto their own territory. Take you a week or so. Okay, boss. How do you like the new job? Fine, I reckon. Wondered if I might keep right at it on through the winter after cutting out in Brandon. You mean you want that winter job? Sure, why not? Bucking the snow drift, running down weak doggies in a blizzard... Ah, most of my boys jammer like a stuck pig when I hand them an assignment like that. Oh, I don't know. I, I ain't much of a hand around the ranch house. I like to be off by myself. I don't mind the cold. If you'd give me the job, I'd sure work at it, Hoppy. <laughs> well, brother, if you want it, you get it. Come on, Dobber, let's get back to headquarters. <laughs> Sheriff, what are you doing here? Oh, just dropping by on a friendly call, Hoppy. You know Shelby Selinger here? Sure. Hello, Mr. Selinger. Have a chair. Thanks. How are you, Cassidy? Great. Just sent one of my line riders out to hustle your stock back on the reservation. Seems an awful lot of Circle C cows like Bar 20 grass better than their own. You save your rider a lot of work, Cassidy. I sold them off last week. I needed the money. I see. Yeah. Mr. Selinger got payment before delivery and shipped $12,000 out by stage day before yesterday, Hoppy. Yeah? Pay off a loan on his ranch. Yeah? It didn't get very far. What do you mean? About as far as the blind turn on the stage road. Road agent shot the driver outright. Wait a minute. Clem Yates was guard on that stage. Shot him down in cold blood. Clem? How could anybody... Yeah, that's the way we all feel, Hoppy. Folks in town are ready for a lynching. You got any leads? We know who it is. His name's Johnny McIver. Is that so? Yeah. We talked to the only passenger on the stage, a girl named Van Richards. She described him for us. Who is this McIver? Young fella, about 25 or so. Just got out of prison. Came through this part of the country a few days ago looking for a job. We, um... Wondered if he came by here. I'll uh, keep on the lookout for him, Sheriff. The townspeople have put up a reward. If he shot Clem Yates, that's all the encouragement I need. We can sure use your help, Bobby. You'll get it, Sheriff. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. California. Huh? Uh, Oh, how are you, Hoppy? Uh... (laughs) I was just frying up half a dozen eggs here to tide me over till dinner. Forget your stomach for once. Hoppy, eggs is brain. I don't need your brain. I need the seat of your pants and a saddle. Right now. What's up? I want you to ride down to South Ridge and pick up Bob Cranston. You mean the new hand you put on yesterday? That's right. I want to find out why he calls himself Cranston when his real name is Johnny MacGyver. <laughs> Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Hoppy Takes a Chance. 
Two men have been murdered. One of them, the beloved Clem Yates, when the mail stage out of Baker's Crossing was held up and robbed by a masked bandit. The sheriff and the townspeople are sure the robber is Johnny McIver, a young ex-convict. And while they scour the country for him, Hoppy is talking to him in the main room of the Bar 20 Ranch House. You've got to believe me, Hoppy. I had nothing to do with this. I didn't Take do... it easy, Bob. I'm not accusing you yet. How come you changed your handle, Sonny? Seems to me we hired a hand named Bob Cranston. I told you, California. People just can't deal an ex-convict a straight hand. Well, I can understand that. But you didn't need a new name around here. We take a man for what he is, not what he used to be. I wish they were all like you. Mr. Selinger didn't look at it that way. Selinger? Yeah. When I first got to town a few days ago, I hit him for a job. When was that? Mm, let me see. Uh, Wednesday afternoon. Hmm. And the stage was held up that night at 8. What did Selinger tell you? He told me to come back about 10 o'clock. Said he'd let me know then. So you went back, huh? Yeah, I started back from town about 7. Didn't see anyone until I got to that place where the... It fords a creek. You know, there's a, a grove of cottonwoods there. Yep, I know the place. There was a fire going and a couple of men boiling up some coffee. They said they were from Selinger's ranch. What did they look like? Mm, one of them was heavy set. Wore a pair of side whiskers. That'd be Sam Wellman. Who? Selinger's ranch foreman. What about the other one? Mm, he was red-headed, kind of short. Yeah, it's Red Conroy. What happened then? They told me Selinger wasn't back to the ranch yet. Asked me to have a cup of coffee with him. It was pretty chilly, and I figured a cup of coffee would taste good, so... So you accepted the invitation? Yeah. They said Mr. Selinger had passed right by there on his way back. Well, we sat around a while, then the redhead pulled out a pack of cards and suggested a game. Uh-oh. Them fellas are sure death at poker. Huh? Red and Sam are a couple of pretty slick poker players. How much did you lose? I didn't lose. I won $300. Huh? Sonny, you're wasting your time as a cowpoke. Anyone who can skin them coyotes at draw poker is... Wait a minute, California. You, uh, pretty good at poker, Bob? Oh, just fair. They play pretty stupid. I took $100 pot with a pair of tens. Huh? Playing again Red Conroy and Sam Wellman? Oh, wait a minute. Maybe this makes sense. What did you do with the 300 Bob? I saved it. They told me a lot of places I could blow it in town, but I didn't... Oh, uh, they did, huh? Uh, now, what's that got to do with it, Hoppy? I'm not sure yet, but I got an idea. A coach was robbed at 8 o'clock. Where were you at that time, Bob? That was about 30 minutes before I met the two men. I, I was at the trail quite a piece. Alone. No alibi. I guess not. About a half hour after the robbery, you run on to Red and Sam and win $300 from them at poker. They figure, of course, you'll roll into town and blow it sky high. When did Salinger finally show up? I don't know. Uh, about ten, I guess. And he turned you down? Yeah. Say so he didn't want any truck with jailbirds. I see. Well, before we start out, I want you to know I'm going to give you every break I can. If you're telling the truth, I'll stand up with you against the whole town. If you're not... I'm not worrying about that, Hoppy. Okay, let's get going. Where? The blind turn on the stage road where the coach was robbed. Maybe we can find a few tracks. Bob. Yeah? You can check your gun here at the ranch house. California and I will take care of any shooting that has to be done. Any luck, Hoppy? No, not a chance of finding any tracks on the road here. Someone came through here with a bunch of cattle after it happened. That was Selinger. That bunch of steers he just sold. Tell me something, California. Anything you want, Hoppy. My brain's at your service. Well, harness it up for a minute. You plan to hold up the mail coach here. Where would you hide out? Well, that's a cinch. Right behind the tree yonder. That's what I thought. Come on. Uh, hey, I sit over there behind the tree. <laughs> sure. So naturally, a smart bandit would hide up in those rocks above the turn. Off along, Cassidy. So help Don't me. Don't get out. insulted, California. You got a wonderful pair of feet. <laughs> Pretty hard to find any tracks in these granite rocks, Hoppy. Yeah, especially when the robber was careful not to make any. Getting pretty dark now, too. You got a match, Bob? No, I don't carry him. Oh. Well, no use looking around here in the dark. May as well ride over to that cottonwood grove of the creek. See if there's anything left of that campfire that you sat around. No dice, Hoppy. There ain't a thing to show anyone's been here. Not a track, not a sign of a campfire. But I told you the truth, Hoppy. I was here. Someone's cleaned the place up. I know it. Huh? You mean you 
believe me? I think I believed you from the first, Bob. Now I got proof. But, 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 but we ain't found a thing, Hoppy. Now how can you... That's just it. It's not what we found, it's what we didn't find. What do you mean? One of our line riders uses this place regularly. Builds his fire right here in the clearing. The ashes would be here if someone didn't have a reason for cleaning them up. They knew Bob had come here with his story. They wanted to make a liar out of him. You mean uh, Sam and Red? Yeah. And back there at the blind turn, we didn't find any tracks on that granite. But I found something else. What was that? That's why I asked you for that match. I never saw a cigarette smoker yet who didn't carry matches. One of the robbers left this behind. Well, I'll be a cigarette butt. Yeah. You think it was Sam and Red? And someone else. The man who planned the job. I can't think of a single reason why a man to drive a herd of cattle six miles out of the way. Unless there were some embarrassing tracks he wanted to cover up. Lord almighty. Salinger. That's right. Salinger. Ah, happy amigo, you come here to my fiesta saloon once in the blue moon. Estás Ferreira, she is on me. Ah, afraid I haven't time for a drink, Mike. I got a lot of things on my mind right ah, now. Ah, you tell Mike the seco, eh? Maybe I help, can't stop it. What do you know about selling here, Mike? Seems to me he was up against us for money for a while back. Why do you ask, Hoppy? Oh, it's pretty important right now. To a kid named Johnny McIver. Uh, that kid, he make one big mistake when he killed Clem Yates. You think he did it? The whole town thinks so. His life, she's worth two centavos, maybe less. You know why, Mike? Because the kid has a prison record. See, si. He's uh, the second man who came to Baker's Crossing with a record, Mike. See, si. And he feels like you did when you got out. He wants to go straight if the people here to let him alone. You have kept our secret well these ten years, of it. But uh, why do you ask about Salinger? Because I think you know how bad he needs money. See, he, he, he tried to borrow 10000 from me two weeks ago. His rancho, the Circle C, she's in one bad fix. That's what I thought. But he got his money, Mike. Huh? What do you mean? He figured by shipping that cattle money express and robbing the stage, he'd collect from Wells Fargo, too. A nice way to double your money. He got a young ex-convict handy to take the blame. Madre de Dios, you, you mean Salinger? Yeah, with Red Conroy and Sam Wellman to give him a hand. Hoppy, you, you can prove this? There was one passenger on the stage, a girl named Ann Richard. I think she knows more than she's telling. Oh, but the word of a young senorita against Salinger. No, she's no good, Hoppy. She's not enough. Mike. See? That's just why I came to see you. Now back to Hop Along, Cassidy, and Hoppy Takes a Chance. Hoppy is sure now that Shelby Salinger and his two henchmen engineered the robbery of the mail stage, carrying his own money, knowing that Johnny McIver, a young ex-convict, would be blamed. But it's quite another matter to prove it. That's why Hoppy has called on Ann Richards, the one passenger on the stage during the robbery and the only living witness. Please, Mr. Cassidy. That's all I know. It's just as I told the sheriff. I tell you, I want to know the truth, Miss Richards. I want to know exactly what happened on that stage from the minute the driver pulled up at that blind corner. But I've told you... You've told me what someone's forcing you to say. Bobby. Yeah? Fred Conroy, standing across the street. I just seen him through the window. I know. Huh? I made sure he saw me come here. Keep an eye on him. Sure, Hoppy. Oh, I sure wish I knew what was going on. You know what you're doing, Mr. Cassidy. He's watching this house. He'll do anything. Kill me. Anything. Wait a minute, Miss Richards. (laughs) I wonder if you know what you're doing. I tell you, he'll kill me. Do you understand that? He'll stop at nothing. Listen to me. You're the only witness to that robbery. Because you said so, they're out looking for one man instead of three. Because you said so, they'll hang Johnny McIver. Because he happens to have a prison record and no alibi. I can't help it. I can't help it. If you want it in plain English, Miss Richards, you're yellow. You're willing to let an innocent man hang to save your own skin. But it's too late to do anything now. The people are ready to lynch him. I can't stop them. What can I do now? You can tell me really what happened out there at that blind corner. You're right, Mr. Cassidy. I guess I am a coward. I don't know. When they came here and threatened me. Who? Conroy and Wellman. They said they'd kill me if I didn't tell the story the way they wanted it. Well, let's have it now. There wasn't just one man, Mr. Cassidy. There were two. Conroy and Wellman. I think so. I couldn't identify them out there on the road. They wore masks. And one kept calling the other, McIver. I see. 
I was inside the coach when they forced Clem Yates to get down. He was right next to the window. I heard him say, MacIver? You're not MacIver. Then what? That's when the shot came. Okay, he's coming across the street. There he is now. Get behind the door when I open it. You know what to do. Stay right here, Miss Richard. Oh. Ready? Let her rip. Hello, Cassidy. Conroy, what can I do for you? I can talk better inside. Especially with a gun in my hand. You think that's going to get you anywhere, Red? Put your hands up, Cassidy. <laughs> that's better. You know, you've got a bad habit. Messing around in things that ain't your business. And I'm going to break you with that right now. Before you get your nose caught in somebody's keyhole. Keep those hands up, Cassidy. Do you hear what I... Oh! Nice work, California. Hit him too hard. My gun butt will never be the same. Oh, Mr. Cassidy. You see, Miss Richards, these tough guys aren't so bad when you use the right kind of diplomacy. Get some rope out back, California. We're going to truss this turkey up so that he won't come undone till roasting time. Right, Huffy. Why are you going through his pocket? Ah, here we are. A letter? Yeah. And it ought to be just what the doctor ordered. You see, Miss Richards, we can hook Red and Sam on your testimony. But there's no way we can touch Salinger. That is, unless either Red or Sam decide to talk. They'll never do that. You don't know them, Mr. Cassidy. And Miss Richards. You don't know Mike DeSico. So, she's changed the story, huh? Yeah. We're bueno. Ah, uh, but not good enough. I want Salinger, too. And if she tells her story now, we lose any chance of getting him. Wait. Huh? Don't turn around. The sheriff just came in. Quick, take this. Okay. A letter Red Conroy wrote to a girl in Council City. Ah, bueno. Morning, Hoppy. Oh, howdy, Sheriff. Anything new? Been keeping mighty busy, Hoppy. Me too. Got no business hanging around the fiesta here. Got to get on back to the ranch. Just a minute, Hoppy. Huh? Don't run off. But you might like to know Johnny McIver was spotted by a posseman an hour ago, riding line on the bar 20. Which means what? Which means you're under arrest, concealing and giving shelter to a public enemy. Sorry, Hoppy, but you're going to jail. What can I do for you, gents? Uh, howdy. Uh, I'm California Carson. This here is Mike DeSico. Uh, I'd like to see you uh, hop along Cassidy, if you don't mind. Well, I don't know. Sheriff said no wants to see him. What, okay. uh, uh, That means why not in Mexico. Already told you. Sheriff said no wants to see him. Well, nothing to do but wait until the sheriff gets back in. Eh? Reckon so. Uh, mind if we sit down? Free country. Here's public property. Sit anywhere you please. Gracias. Hey. Uh, that means uh, thanks in Mexico. Yeah. Now, you sit in the chair there. Mike and I'll sit in this here packing box. Excuse me a minute, Chance. I just want to check up on the prisoner. Mike, did you get a look at them cell keys hanging from his belt? See? Can you get them? <laughs> Can I get them? At the age of six, I was the second best pickpocket in Mexico City. Who was the best? My papa. We'll get him when he sits down. You pull the chair and grab his gun, no? Here we come. Hundreds of dollars. Stone walls do not a prison mate, the fellow says. Ain't never seen the Baker's Cross in jail, I reckon. <laughs> oh, old hobby. Uh, wonder if he's had his dinner. Oh, don't worry. Sheriff will bring him something when he gets back. Say, uh, you fellas play cards? <laughs> Thought we might have a little game while we're waiting. Uh, got a deck uh, right here someplace and draw the steps. Oh, yes, 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 there we are. Ah, maybe a little, um, penny ante, no? Tenth of a cent I always play. Now, <laughs> Suffering snake, sir. You hurt yourself? Let me help you. Your chair went right out from under me. Don't know what happened. Here, here. I'll give you a hand. Uh, foot slipped under the desk. Caught on something down there. Now, uh, what's in time, Nathan? What's the matter here? You, oh, you're stuck. Got my foot jammed in the spit tube. Trapped and trapped like a rat. I am. No dice, no dice. Oh, let me get a new holt here. That won't work neither. Only making my leg longer. <laughs> Gotta move the desk. Guess so. There she goes. Come, son, it, get off of that foot, you crazy spittoon. Get off of it. Hey, hey, 
She ain't had a world like that since I stepped in the bar trap one winter in Montana. Let's get the dust back on her feet and... Hey. Huh? Uh, what's the matter? Where's the other fella? Huh? Uh, oh, uh, you mean Mike. Uh, well, doggone, looks like he went. Trying to pull the wool over my eyes, eh? He's back there at Cassidy Cell. That's where he is. I'll show that fella rules of rules. Yeah, by golly, you show him. Hey, you down there. Stop the name of What do you see? Look at that. Door's open. Tag busted. He took my key. Well, I'll take a look inside. Maybe Hoppy's hiding under the bed or something. I can't sound it. I can see, can't I? She's as empty as the day she was made. Hey! Hey, that! Open his door! Get me out of here! Get me out! Hoppy! Get me out of here! Mike! You got him? Sure, I got him. Come on, let's get going. Yeah, we haven't much time. Wait a minute, you bombin, so help me (laughs) out. Adios, amigo. Adios! What does that mean? That's goodbye in Mexico. Let's show you up here now. We'll show you what justice is, Sheriff. Quiet, quiet, everyone. It's my duty to see justice is done. That's why I've come out here to the bar 20 after Johnny McIver. If he's found guilty by a jury after he's had a fair trial, he'll get the full punishment under the law. And not until... We'll give you five minutes to turn him over, Sheriff. Yes, just five minutes. Getting mighty rough out there, Sullinger. Don't think we can hold out much longer. He hasn't got a chance. He don't deserve a chance. The law says he gets a fair trial, Sam. That mob ain't gonna take him without a fight. Twelve men against that mob out there? You're out of your mind, Sheriff. You got any ideas, Sullinger? Yeah. You went out on the porch there and grabbed their attention. The kid and I might be able to get away from the rear. Say, that might work, Sheriff. If we could get him back to the jailhouse, we might be able to hold him off. And if the mob spotted you? Well, that's the chance we have to take. Now back to Hop Along Cassidy. I don't know about that, Sullinger. If you take Johnny McIver out the back way and make a run for it... Now don't you see it's the only chance? The men you got won't stand up against that mob for two minutes. Well, I guess we'll have to try it. But an awful lot depends on you. You just leave it to me, Sheriff, and things will turn out just fine. I'll bring the kid in. Come here, McIver. I want to... Cassidy! Hello, Sheriff. What are you doing here? Oh, I got kind of bored down at the jail. Hello, Sellinger. And Sam Wellman. Welcome to Bar 20. You're just in time for the payoff. What are you talking about, Cassidy? This. Well, what's that? A little billy do from your pal Red Conroy. Starts out, the following is my true and complete confession on the holdup and murder at the blind turn at 8 o'clock on the night of September 12th. Let me see that. Not so fast, Sellinger. Want to take a look at it, Sheriff? Yeah. Just a trick. Shut up, Sellinger. It's Red Conroy's handwriting, all right. I gotta tell it a mile away. What'd you do with him, Cassidy? He's, uh, taking it easy in town. And while I stood guard at the bend, Sam Wellman walked up to Clem Yates. It's a lie! Conroy killed him! Shut up, Sam! That double-crosser ain't gonna frame me, and you ain't either, Salinger. I never pulled a trigger! Sam! Get away from him, Salinger! Salinger shot the driver, Sheriff! That's the truth, or else I was keeping watch! And it was Red who walked up to Clem Yates, huh? Yeah, yeah! Stay where you are, Salinger! Keep your hands up. I'll get you for this, Wellman, so help me on. You ain't getting anyone now, Sellinger. You're going to turn around while I march the two of you out on the porch and read this confession to the crowd. Come on, now. Get going. Did it work, Hoppy? Yeah. We're going out on the porch. <whistles> it was a mite too close for me, Hoppy. You see two Californians. How about me? You got a clean slate now, Bob. From here on in, it's up to you. And you can thank Mike here for small favors. Oh, it was nothing, amigo. As they say in Mexico, la cuerda se rompe por lo más delgado. The rope she break at the weakest point. Is verdad, no? <laughs> yeah. And we all have another secret to keep. Eh, hey, Mike? Huh? What's that, Hoppy? That confession of Red Conroy's. Or maybe you didn't know that Mike DeSico, in his heyday, was the best forger west of the Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> It's 
mighty peaceful at the Bar 20 now that this Johnny McIver affair is over, but somehow things never stay that way for very long. Hop in California will be riding into more dangerous adventure real soon. Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Hoppy Takes a Chance was written by Harold Swamp. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs> <laughs>